Welcome to today's ceremony in honor of Major General Andre F. Pegues' promotion to the rank of Lieutenant General. The host for today's ceremony is General Dennis L. Vi, Commanding General, Army Materiel Command. We would like to extend a special welcome to the Honorable Eric K. Fanning, Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Alan F. Estevez, Principal Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition Technology and Logistics, and the Honorable Katharina McFarland, Acting Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology. Additionally, we would like to welcome all general officers, senior executive service members, soldiers, Department of the Army civilians, Mrs. Vi and Mrs. Pegee. We are also honored to have Major General Pegee's family and friends present for today's ceremony. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to share in this special occasion. The official party for today's ceremony consists of General Dennis L. Vi, Commanding General, Army Materiel Command, and Major General Andre F. Pegee, Deputy Chief of Staff, G4. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Staff Sergeant Matthew Smith and the invocation by Chaplain Burgess. Please be seated. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Please be seated. Please pray with me. Years ago, in a small Arkansas town, a young man charted his course in life. But you, O oh God of wisdom and counsel, determined his steps, and this unforeseen change became a blessing, opportunity for the United States Army taught from a young age that all things are possible in his strength. Today we rejoice with General Piggy upon his promotion to Lieutenant General as you have blessed him with this special trust. May he continue the journey by the light of your strength and label in its hope holding dear to this sacred trust given him by the nation. May the examples of his past be a living legacy to sustain his spirit now and in the future as he faced both new challenges and familiar responsibilities. Strengthen him that he may model steadfast leadership in every field of human endeavors and empower those he lead. Look kindly upon his wonderful family, his wife, Cassie, 
daughter Alexis, and wonderful mother Maxine. Bless the families and friends who support them with their priceless gifts of love and understanding. Let them be a authentic image of care and concern for the Army family. Keep us faithful in our duties. Make us worthy examples for those we follow and those who follow. Order our steps with your word. Thus we pray in your most holy name. Amen. It is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce Generous, uh, General Dennis L. Vi, Commanding General, Army Materiel Command. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Well, what a great day it is to be a soldier, and what an gr even greater day for our Army, and certainly a great day for the Pegui family. And while it may be cloudy and overcast outdoors, the sun is shining brightly in the Pentagon Auditorium today. It's also a great personal privilege for me to be able to have the honor of promoting an outstanding soldier, a tremendously gifted leader, and an exceptional general officer, Major General Andre Pagui, whom I've had the privilege of knowing for nearly 20 years. We met at Fort Hood, Texas, when I was a colonel commanding the 3rd Signal Brigade, and Andre was down in 1st Cavalry Division commanding the 15th Forward Support Battalion. And I recognized then, as our Army recognizes now, what an incredibly gifted leader he was. Andre and Cassie, thank you both for the privilege of presiding at your ceremony today. Lynn and I are so very honored to share in this very special day with you and your family and your peers. And since this is a general officer promotion, it reminds me of a story. I once heard of a newly promoted major general who was being driven down a muddy road in France during World War II. He was sitting in a passenger seat enjoying the view when they came across a jeep that was stuck in the mud. Standing beside it was a very frustrated lieutenant general. The major general told his driver to stop, and he got out to help. And he remarked to the lieutenant general, he said, is your jeep stuck, sir, with a sly grin? Nope, replied the lieutenant general, tossing him the keys. Yours is. Don't forget that, Andre. <laughs> well, I want to first uh, take a moment and personally welcome several of our distinguished leaders in attendance today. Our Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Eric Fanning. Sir, it's so wonderful to have you here. Thank you also for your telephone call yesterday. The Honorable Alan Estevez, a great friend. It's great to see you here, Alan. And also, Honorable McFarland. Katrina, thank you for being here as well. We've got Mr. Tom Hawley here. We got Lieutenant General Karen Dyson, Quantock, and Bingham that are here, and General Art Gregg, a great friend, a great mentor for all those who are in the quartermaster and logistics community. Sir, so on, we're honored to have you here today as well. So many of our other distinguished guests, Secretary Spear, thank you for being here as well. Our DAS, thank you for being here also, and all of the fellow general officers, active and retired, members of the Senior Executive Service. Officers, soldiers, civilians, Department of the Army, and our distinguished guests, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I'd also like to recognize my better half, Linda. Especially ceremonies like these, she always makes me look better. And of course, General Pegues' extended family and close friends, having you here, I know today, is what makes these ceremonies even more special. The presence of so many senior leaders, family members, and close lifelong friends is a true testament to the kind of soldier and the kind of leader our Army is promoting to Lieutenant General today. To the Chaplain Burgess, thank you for that wonderful blessing for the ceremony and the family, and Staff Sergeant Matthew Smith for wonderful rendition of our national anthem, 
and to all the protocol personnel and those who work behind the scenes to make this such a first-class ceremony. Thank all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing all of these wonderful patriots. As those of us who wear or have worn the uniform of a United States Army soldier, we know that the strength comes from our families. And we're indeed fortunate to have a very strong family here today. First and foremost, Andre's wife of 18 years, Cassie. Cassie has been an incredible, supportive, and active member of our Army family, from serving as a manager and senior trainer at Carlson Wagon Lick Travel, to teaching college courses to our soldiers at Colleton State University at Fort Hood. And of course, the many hours spent organizing and managing family support groups wherever they served, and especially during the long deployments when Andre was away from home on mission. In recognition of her volunteer service and community involvement, she was named a Yellow Rose of Texas by then Governor George W. Bush. She was presented the Department of the Army Outstanding Civilian Award, Service Award from General Walter Sharp. And she received the prestigious Presidential Volunteer Service Award from President Barack Obama. Thank you, Cassie, for everything you do in support of Andre, our soldiers, Department of the Army civilians, and their families. We know his success today is a large tribute to all of your great support. Please join me in recognizing Cassie today. We're also joined by Andre's daughter, Alexis, who traveled here from Atlanta, Georgia, where she is the Director of Client Services for True Vision Management Group. Alexis, you can be proud, very proud, in fact, that you've also been a part of your dad's service to our nation. And you contributed greatly to his success that led to the promotion ceremony today. Love and support are what makes the difference. And you've certainly given both unconditionally to your father. And we're very appreciative of that. And I know he is as well, because he always beams with pride when he talks about you. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize the other family members who are here. Andre's mother, Ms. Maxine Pegue, who traveled here from Texarkana, Tech, uh, Arkansas. She's a 30-year retiree from the Lone Star Army Ammunition Plant in Texarkana, Texas. And I think one time that organization was under the Army Material Command. <laughs> and how fortunate it is to meet you today. She's represented other great folks who work in our organic industrial base today. So, ma'am, we thank you so much for being here. We thank you for your service to our Army. And most of all, we thank you for raising such a wonderful son. We know Andre wouldn't be the officer and the man he is today without all of your support and guidance and the principles that you instilled in him throughout the years. Andre's late father, Roland Pegui, served in World War II. He was a member of General George Patton's famous Third Army and was part of the legendary Red Ball Express. And Andre, I know he's looking down on this ceremony today with great, a, a large smile on his face and beaming with pride at what his son has accomplished. We'd also like to welcome Andre's brother, Carlos, his wife, Maida, and their children, Rico and Ariana, from Lorton, Virginia. We're also honored to have Cassie's mother here, Miss Shirley Gideon, who traveled from Colleen, Texas, Cass's late father also served Command Sergeant Major Kenneth Gideon, retired after 31 years in our Army, including three tours in Vietnam. And we thank this wonderful family for his service as well. And Cass's sister is here. You can clearly tell, Kelly Taylor from Botan Beach, Florida. It's wonderful to have you here as well. To the entire Piggy family and friends, including the many who are watching, via the live internet stream. Thank you for joining us today. Please join me in a round of applause for this wonderful Pagee family. <laughs> now, 
Now, I don't have to tell those in this audience today what a big deal it is to be promoted to Lieutenant General. Of the more than 78,000 officers serving in our Army, only 50 are Lieutenant Generals. And so far this year, only 11 Major Generals were nominated for promotion into that select group. So as you can see, the selection for appointment to Lieutenant General truly represents the best of the best. But why did our Army decide to nominate Major General Pegui? Will it be impossible to detail his 35 years of service to our Army in the next few minutes? But I would like to mention a few highlights that illustrate the professional caliber and a personal character of this talented general officer we're soon to promote. Don Andre's service in our Army, he has worn the duty title of commander five times and twice doing operational assignments. First as the commander of the 77th Maintenance Company, part of 5th Corps, in Babenhausen, Germany. He later became the commander of the 15th Forward Support Battalion and deployed that unit to Operation Joint Forge in Bosnia. After serving as commander of Division Rear Detachment for the 1st Cavalry Division at Fort Hood, Andre assumed command of the 15th Sustainment Brigade, also at Fort Hood. He deployed the brigade to Iraq from November 2006 to November 2007. The height of the surge operations in a particularly challenging time in a critical period for sustainment operations in theater. After successful assignments as executive officer to the vice chief of staff of the Army and the CJ4 of the United Nations Command, United States Forces Korea, Andre was selected to become the commanding general of the 21st Theater Support Command, our Army's lead organization for all sustainment activities in the European theater. And upon conclusion of that command tenure, he was selected to direct logistics and engineering in one of the busiest commands in our military, the U.S. Central Command at McNeil Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida. For the past three years, at CENTCOM's J-4, Andre's leadership and tireless efforts have been no less than extraordinary. I traveled to that theater many times throughout my tenure as AMC commander. And each time when I met with the COCOM commanders or the Joint Task Force commanders, they always replied, we don't worry about logistics because we've got Andre Pagui here. He spearheaded initiatives to reduce our footprint in Afghanistan by 700 bases and 5 million pieces of equipment and other supplies, one of the largest retrograde operations in the Department of Defense history. He established CENTCOM's first operational contracting support integration cell to provide oversight and guidance to a myriad of contracting activities across the command's AOR. And his keen understanding of planning and in-depth knowledge of logistics and engineering were essential in helping CENTCOM's effort to build partner capacity in Iraq and the train and equip mission in Syria. Along the way, Andre earned a bachelor's degree in biology from the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, a master's degree in material acquisition management from the Florida Institute of Technology, and a master's degree in strategic studies from the U.S. Army War College at Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania. You can see that he was a very, very busy professional as he continued to perform his duties. And that's an impressive record of past achievement. However, in the United States Army, we promote officers based on their future potential. And Major General Pagui has clearly demonstrated the potential for even greater accomplishments in the future. So Andre, congratulations on your well-deserved appointment to Lieutenant General. Linda and I wish you and Cassie and your family much continued success. We're truly honored to know you and to serve with you, and we wish you both only the very, very best for much continued success. May God continue to bless you and your family, our deployed service members and their families, and the civilians who support them, and also may God continue to bless the United States of America. And so if you're ready, Andre, we'll get on to putting a third star on your shoulder. Thank you all very much.
Will Mrs. Begee, daughter Alexis, and mother Mrs. Maxine Begee, please join General Bai on stage as we publish the orders. We ask that the audience please remain seated during the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, and fidelity and abilities of Andre F. Begee. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore appointed in the Army of the United States from Major General to Lieutenant General. Appointment is effective 23 September 2016 with the date of rank of 23 September 2016, by order of the Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Eric K. Fanning. Family may return to your seats, please. The military officer's oath is a combination of constitutional requirements, historic influence, and centuries old custom. Although the first oath of office for government officials dates back to 1789, the version we use today was approved by Congress in 1868. At each promotion, soldiers may take the oath to reaffirm their commitment to service their nation as members of the armed forces. It is important to note that officers take an oath not to a person, such as the President of the United States, but to the Constitution. General Vi will now administer the oath of office. Having been appointed an officer, having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States, in the Army of the United States, as indicated above, as indicated above, in the grade of Lieutenant General, in the grade of Lieutenant General, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, and that I take this obligation freely, and that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion. Our purpose of evasion. And I will well and faithfully discharge. And I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. The duties of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, General.
Lieutenant General Pegui and Sergeant Major Mansker will now uncase the three-star general officer flag. Throughout the history of warfare, a general officer's personal flag has symbolized leadership on the battlefield. The flag's distinct colors and the arrangement of stars represents the general's branch of service and rank. Customs and courtesies dictate that this personal flag be present at all military functions and be visibly displayed in the office of the general officer at all official functions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present the Army's newest Lieutenant General, Lieutenant General Andre F. Pegui. Thank you all very much. Uh, I could only tell you how much I really appreciate uh, you being here today and how special this day really is. So I thank you all so much. To uh, Secretary Fanning, sir, thank you. I know how extremely busy you are. This is my fourth day on the job, and I've only got to see a little bit, but I can confirm that I know the Army staff is very busy. Thank you for attending today. Sir, same. It, uh, it just doesn't get any better than this, and I would not have this day without you. Thank you so very much. I'm also grateful for all the distinguished guests that are here today, my family and my overflowing number of friends that are here, uh, you honor Cassie and I, and I thank you all so very much. Thank you very much. So my wife tells me as I get older, uh, my older brother tells me this too, the, uh, the older I get, the more long-winded I get. So I'll try to keep my uh, remarks brief today. But today, I'm one of the uh, luckiest people in the world. For 30 plus years, I've worn this uniform doing exactly what I wanted to do. So there's a long list of people who support who's, that has enabled me to get to this position today. First, I want to thank those who helped out today. Staff Sergeant Smith, as Joan Vice said, your rendition of our national anthem was simply outstanding. Thank you so much. To Chaplain Burgess, met him not more than a couple of weeks ago when we immediately formed a bond. Your prayer was heartfelt and provides a level of comfort for us all here today. Thank you so much. And Mr. Tony Hosky and his DA protocol team, as well as my staff who work, have been working behind the scenes to pull this event off, uh, another spectacular event, and I thank you very much for all that you've done. To Mr. Estevez, sir, we've, <laughs> we've had some close knife fights over the past three years. Uh, I don't know if I would have made it without your support. Thank you so much for being here. Ms. McFarlane, ma'am, uh, great to join your team and look forward to working with you in the days and, and weeks ahead. To the dads, sir, you've been very helpful. I've known you for a long time. Thank you. And to all of our distinguished guests, to my fellow general officers, to Sergeant Major Maskey and all of our sergeants major that are here today, to our civilian leadership that are here, thank you all. Thank you all for being here. And I'd like to especially recognize uh, former G4 Lieutenant General Greg. Sir, you inspire us all by your presence here today. Thank you all for being here. Joe Vi, again, sir, thank you so much. You mentioned that in World War II, my dad Lee proudly served in Patton's Third Army. As a logistician, as a truck driver, Red Ball Express, he was proud of that. He was proud to be part of the Third Army. His service and stories helped me make up my mind to follow a military career. I'm so proud that for the last 20 years that I've known uh, General Vi, that I've been part of the Vi's Army. Thank you and Ms. Linda for being here this day. It means the world to Cassie and I. We really appreciate you being here. The two of you have been perfect, perfect role models and the perfect example 
We have watched you both and learned so much from you both. You've done it all with enormous grace, and your legacy has impacted generations to come. I know tomorrow will be a very special day for you. The chief is headed to Huntsville to salute someone, someone who has led in the tradition of the Army's finest soldiers and finest general officers. It, would, it is a little sad for us to say farewell to you today, but before you depart, I'm hoping that everyone here in the auditorium would help me, join me, and stand and give these uh, great two soldiers uh, and spouse a Pentagon salute. Sir, thank you very much and all the best. I know this day is a day for me to look ahead, <clears throat> but in this moment, I cannot help but look back too, because so many of you have come so far, so many great friends. People that are here are watching live on the web or from my high school. It's unbelievable. From my ROTC days, the distinguished alumni of my alma mater, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, I think that this is probably the biggest reunion of my basic course class <laughs> in the past 20 years. There are soldiers from uh, all around the Army, soldiers who I was commissioned with from every assignment that I've had, great friends, too many to name. Uh, but I just want to thank each and every one of you. Cass and I mean this from the bottom of my heart that you thought enough of us to take your time to make this celebration and be part of the celebration with us. We thank you so very much. I'd like to thank, uh, there's uh, several members of uh, my fraternity here. You see my brother wearing his red, proudly wearing his red jacket to the members of Cap Alpha Psi. Uh, I really thank you for being here today. And there are those who I'm thinking of today my mentors who played an instrumental role in my life, Generals Austin, Wilson, McKernan, Corelli, Brooks, Proctor, Edmonds, and that list goes on. They challenged me with incredible opportunities. I'm thinking of non-commissioned officers and soldiers who helped, who helped me execute those missions. NCOs like Morris, Joseph, Sanchez, and thousands of men and women who keep our nation safe and the courageous families who truly are the unsung heroes who sacrifice every day for all of us. They too have been instrumental in my success. And of course, foremost in my heart, I thank God for his continued blessings, for he truly is the head of my life. Secretary Fanning, I'd like to thank you and General Milley for having the confidence to allow me to serve on the Army staff. My focus areas will be your priorities, to build readiness, to build a future force, and to take care of our soldiers, civilians, and families. I have tre tremendous respect for Lieutenant General Perna and the G4 staff and what they've achieved in the last two years. They've improved expeditionary force capabilities, and working together, I'm convinced that we can build on that solid foundation, and I am proud to join your team. People have been asking, what is it like to come back to the Pentagon? Uh, this, this building has great meaning to me, but uh, let me just uh, cite two. First, I was here when I worked for uh, General Corelli, and those of you that might know him or remember him, uh, he was the ultimate example of what right looks like. But I will also tell you that I've never been more busy in my military career than working my first experience here in the building. Zach and I have great respect for the staff and the impact that we can have. Coming from CENTCOM and working for General Austin, who I think is one of our greatest war fighters in the history of our nation, I have witnessed how war has changed in the last years. I know the work we do in Washington will determine our ability to continue to overmatch any enemy that we might face in the future. And finally, I'd like to thank my family. My parents, 
my sister who uh, could not make it, I think she's watching on the web, and my brothers, my in-laws, uh, who I just have the best in-laws in the world. We grew up in Stamps, Arkansas, a population of about 1,200 people. That's about a third of the room <laughs> here today. As General Vi indicated, I have two brothers, Edgar and Carlos, and sir, I screwed up, and sir, my older brother, I, I have to say, you got to stand up. My older brother, when I grew up, I wanted to be just like him. <laughs> Some big shoes to fill. But I thank, thank you for being here. We had a great, uh, great childhood. We went to public schools. My father, who I know is looking down today, probably in a formation, <laughs> he was a principal of the, uh, of the country school. Uh, most kids uh, would not get sent to the office when they got in trouble. The teachers would just take care of that at the, in that day. But I would get sent to the office to see the principal. <laughs> and I go in and see the principal, and he would take care of me, as you may recall in the good old days, how the principal would do that. I don't want to repeat that now. I don't know if statute of limitations is over. <clears throat> but when I get home, uh, my dad would say, son, how was your day? Come here, tell me what happened at school today. And my dad uh, was a father first, so he forgot about what happened at school. <laughs> I got it again when I got home. <laughs> but my dad continues to be my role model. My mother, who's fortunate to be here today, she's the glue of our family. She's truly the wind beneath our wings. Our parents taught us three keys to success, and I found them to be exactly spot on. They told us to, to work hard. If it's worth doing, it's worth giving your best, and it's worth working hard. They taught us to follow the golden rule, always treat others with dignity and respect, and that's what I try to do every day, and that's what I've taught my daughter. And lastly, and most importantly, she told us, they told us to keep faith in God. That's what my parents mean to me, and I'd like to give a small token uh, to my mother at this time. Mother, you mean the world to me? I appreciate you being here. I love you so much. You know, it's come, it's come full circle. I guess there's something special about being a lieutenant. My mother commissioned me as second lieutenant. I, my last three promotions, I've been overseas, so the last promotion she was able to attend was lieutenant colonel. And today, she helped uh, promote me to lieutenant general. That's pretty special. Full circle. Thank you, Mother. I'd like to thank my mother-in-law, first of all, for uh, give it, allowing me to marry your daughter and preparing the best young lady in the world, I think. Uh, but thank you for accepting me as a son. You have four daughters, but, uh, and you have mother, other son-in-laws, but you always treat us, and me in particular, as your son, and I greatly appreciate that, and it means the world to me. And I thank you. And I have a small token of thank you for your loving care and support over the years. Thank you so much. I want to thank my daughter. You, you all saw her here on the stage. She's just a wonderful young lady. I know I'm a little biased. Uh, but Alexis, I am so very proud of you. And all I want you to know is that you will always be daddy's little girl. I love you so much. I have a small presentation for you as well. Most of all, I want to thank my wife, Cassie. She has made such significant sacrifices for me. Cassie has given up two careers, as General Austin detailed in his remarks. Careers that she loved and she was doing extremely well in move overseas or to move wherever the army saw fit to send us. You never questioned, you never asked. You were head of all of those family readiness units. You led rear detachments during deployments. You were on GO teams where spouses were told that their military member had been killed. You have given you all and you've done it all for me. She has been always extremely supportive and is a true expression of love. She simply 
is exceptional in every respect. Cassie, you are the most wonderful spouse I know. Thank you for being my perfect partner. You complete me, and I love you so very much. This is a small perfect love. So I want to end this. My wife and my brother tells me that I go on too long. My dad's military idol, General Patton, Patton uh, would say, and I quote, wars may be fought with weapons, but they are won by men. It's the spirit of the men who follow and the man who leads that gains the victory, end of quote. Of course, today, it's not just men. It's talented women and men serving side by side who both lead and follow. I am one grateful person to have this opportunity to lead. May God continue to bless this great nation, and may God continue to bless our army. Thank you all very much. Please stand for the benediction and remain standing for the singing of the Army's song led by Staff Sergeant Matthew Smith. The words can be found in your program. And now, God, grant that we who have gathered for this occasion may depart in safety and peace, preserve the ties which binds us, though we may be scattered in different direction. Bless all who celebrate this day, another great day in the life and another great chapter in the life of Lieutenant General Piggy family. Give us each memories which will last a lifetime, well beyond this time and place. This we pray in your strong and mighty name. Amen. March along, sing a song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. This concludes today's ceremony. We invite you to join Lieutenant General Pegui and his family for a gathering outside the Pentagon Auditorium immediately following this event. Please remain standing near your seats until the official party, senior leaders, and the Pegui family have left the room. Thank you for attending and have a safe trip home. Army strong.